good morning students welcome back to session 9 of linear transformations so in the last class you have studied what's meant by an <coughs> nilpotent linear transformations and you have studied uh, many theorems related to uh, nilpotent linear transformations in this class let us discuss about the next canonical forms which is jordan form before that let us discuss about the decomposition of the vector space and uh, the minimal polynomials and their on okay say first one say let v be a finite dimensional vector space over a field f and let t belongs to a of b be arbitrary suppose that v1 is a subspace of v invariant under the transformation t then you know that t induces a linear transformation t1 on v1 defined by t1 of u is same as t of u for every u belongs to v1 so t1 is nothing but the restriction of t to the subspace v1 now given any polynomial q of x in f of x the linear transformation induced by q of t so the polynomial q of x belongs to f of x then the linear transformation induced by q of t on the subspace v i is v1 is nothing but q of t1 this is v1 v1 is nothing but q of t1 in particular if q of t is 0 if q of t is 0 then definitely q of t1 is also 0 q of t is also if q of t is 0 then q of t1 is also 0 thus t1 satisfies any polynomial satisfied by t okay so thus t1 satisfies the polynomial which are satisfied by t now the can the converse holds true so that will be answered by the next results say suppose we have the vector space v which is the direct sum of subspaces v1 and v2 where v1 and v2 are subspaces of v which are invariant under t okay let t1 and t2 be the linear transformations induced by t on v1 and v2 respectively if the minimal polynomial of t1 over f is p1 of x and that of t2 is p2 of x then what about the minimal polynomial of t the minimal polynomial of t is the lcm of the minimal polynomials of t1 and t2 that is lcm of p1 of x and p2 of x runs on this so if v is the direct sum of vector spaces v1 and v2 then and if t1 and t2 are the linear transformations induced by t on v1 and v2 then the minimal polynomial of t1 <coughs> over f is the lcm of the minimal polynomial of t1 and t2 okay let us prove this now so now minimal polynomial means you know that the polynomial of smallest degree satisfied by a transformation okay suppose p of x is the minimal polynomial of t over f means p of t is 0 now if p of t is 0 definitely you know that p of t1 is also 0 and p of t2 is also 0 consequently now p of t1 is 0 p of t2 is 0 means what will happen so p1 of x divides p of x and p2 of x also divides p of x now p1 of x divides p of x p2 of x also divides p of x means the lcm of p1 of x and p2 of x also divides p of x okay lcm of p1 of x and p2 of x also divides p1 p of x on the other hand if you say q of x is the lcm of p1 and p2 then by definition p1 of x is the minimal polynomial means p of p1 of x divides q of x and p2 of x also divides q of x now p1 of x divides q of x implies and v1 belong v belongs to v1 imply q of t1 see here and v1 belongs to v1 imply q of t of v1 is what q of t of v1 means on on v1 t becomes t1 q of t1 of v1 q of t1 is what 0 okay q of t1 <coughs> q of t1 is 0 0 of v1 0 is a air operator 0 of v1 means 0 itself similarly since p2 also divides q of x and v2 belong to v2 imply q of t of v2 is q of t2 of v2 that is 0 of v2 is 0 now any vector v in v can be written as v is the direct sum of v1 plus v2 where v1 is an element of v1 and v2 is an element of v2 therefore q of t of v is equal to q of t of v means v1 plus v2 
that is called q of t of v1 plus q of t of v2. So, this is 0, this is 0 means so sum is also 0. Therefore, q of t of v is 0 for every v belongs to v means what? q of t itself is 0 means t satisfies q of x. t satisfies q of x means t satisfying the LCM of p of x and p1 of x and p2 of x is which is nothing but we have assumed q of x is the LCM of p1 of x and p2 of x. Okay. Now, this, this results can be extended for any number of subspaces. Say for example, if v is the direct sum of v1, v2, etc. of vk, where each vi is invariant under t and if pi of x is the minimal polynomial of t i over f, then the then the minimal polynomial of t over f is the LCM of p1 of x, p2 of x, etc. pk of x. Means the above result can be extended for any finite number of subspaces of v. Now, look here. Suppose t belongs to a of v. And suppose p of x is the minimal polynomial of t over f. That means p of t is 0. Now, if p of x belongs to f of x, you know that any polynomial can by unique factorization theorem, every polynomial can be written factored in any way as the product of irreducible polynomials. Therefore, the given polynomial p of x can also be factored in a unique way as p of x as q1 of x power of l1, q2 x, x, q2 of x power of l2, etc., qk of x power of lk. Okay? Where each qa of x are irreducible polynomials in f of x and where l1, l2, etc., lk are positive integers. This is like they are powers like p of x may be x minus 2 whole square into x plus 3 whole cube uh, into x minus 7 whole power of 5 like this. So, l1, l2 denotes the numbers, powers. Now, we decompose v as a direct sum of, now we decompose v as a direct sum of subspaces invariant under t, each of them invariant under t such that on each of these the linear transformation induced by t is what? T i which has a minimal polynomial a power of an irreducible polynomial a power of an irreducible polynomial are you understand now. So, so, t belongs to a of v and p of x is the minimal polynomial. I will decompose v in such a way that v 1 is in such a way that the minimal polynomial of the transformation induced by t on v i's okay, is this one power of an irreducible polynomial power of an irreducible polynomial means say for example if i uh, split v as direct sum of say v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 then t on v1 induces t1 from v1 to v1 and t2 from v2 to v2 so we decompose here the theorem says we decompose v in such a way that in such a way that v can be decomposed as sum of v1 plus v2 v1 plus v2 such that the minimal polynomial of this transformation is say q1 of x power of l1 this is the minimal polynomial of t1 and the minimal polynomial of t2 is q2 of x power of l2 okay we decompose v in such a way that their minimal polynomial of the transformations are are power of an irreducible polynomial here q1 q of x is a irreducible polynomial which is a power l1 q2 of x is a irreducible polynomial which has a power l2 okay so let us see how we decompose now if k is equal to 1 if k is equal to 1 we cannot split v yes so v itself already does this for us so let us assume that k is greater than 1 k is greater than 1 means what let v1 be the set of it contains set of all vectors v belongs to v such that q1 of t power of l1 of v is equal to 0 our answer now set of v1 is equal to set of all vectors v belongs to v such that q1 of t power of l1 of v is 0 v2 is set of all v belongs to v such that q2 q2 of t power of l2 of v is 0 etc v, vk is set of all v belongs to v such that qk of t of l 
q a k of t power of l k of v is 0. So, we decompose v as v 1 plus v 2 etcetera v k whose minimal polynomials are power of n irreducible polynomial. Then clearly each v a is a subspace of v we can verify this and each v a is a subspace of and if any vector u belongs to v i implies q i of t power of l i of t of u is equal to t of q i of t power of l i of u but this is the minimal polynomial so it will be 0 t of 0 which is 0 means if u belongs to v i t of u also belongs to v i therefore what you can say each v i is invariant under t okay each of the above subspaces are invariant under t so uh, then you know that t induces the transformation t i on these subspaces okay then we have one important result that states for each i is equal to 1 to k we have v i is non-zero v is the direct sum of v1 v2 etc v k and q i of x power of l i is a minimal polynomial for t i q i of x power of l i is a minimal polynomial for t i where t i is a linear transformation induced by t on v i okay let us prove one by one first let us prove v i is non-zero each of the subspace as is non-zero say if k is equal to 1 then v is equal to v1 v becomes v1 splitting is only 1 so and there is nothing to prove so let k may be greater than 1 consider the polynomials h1 of x as look here h1 of x as q2 of x power of l2 q3 of x power of l3 etc qk of x power of lk and h2 of x is q1 of x power of l1 q2 i will leave it q3 of x power of l3 etc qk of x power of lk likewise generally h i of x is general element h i of x can be written as look here h i of x can be written as product of j is not equal to i q j of x power of l j means q1 of x power of l1 q2 of x power of l2 etc q i minus 1 of x power of li minus 1 into q i plus 1 of x power of li plus 1 and so on up to q k of x power of l k therefore h k is this one okay means that uh, k term we have deleted in this now since k is greater than 1 definitely h i of x is not equal to p of x where p of x is the minimal polynomial t because in each of these one term is missing right so each of the hi of x cannot be equal to the minimal polynomial therefore if they are not equal means hi of t is not equal to p of t but p of t is the minimal polynomial means it is zero this implies hi of t is not zero hi of t is a transformation because it is a polynomial in t means it is also a linear transformation because if t is a transformation t square plus 4 into t is also a transformation t square plus 4t plus 5t cube they, that is also a transformation on v ok. So now h of t h i of t is a non-zero transformation means it carries no, s it carries non-zero vector to non-zero vector. So it means there exists some vector v belongs to v such that h i of t of v is non-zero ok. So take h i of t of v as some vector say w then what will happen? q i of t of l i of w so this is equal to q i of t of l i w means i can write it as w means h i of t of h i of t of v so h i of t of v so this is nothing but what h i added here in for q i means p of t of v so this is nothing but 0 of v 0 of v means 0 means q i q i of t power of li of w is 0 means w belongs to what by definition of v i is w belongs to v i and so v i cannot be 0 v i cannot be 0 means this is h i of t of v means w is non zero and that non zero vector belongs to v i means v i cannot be 0 v i cannot be 0 second one ok now we will show that v is the direct sum of v1 v2 etc vk now 
Clearly, what is the GCD of H1 of X into a, what is the GT, GCD of H1 of X, H2 of X, etc., HK of X? Because no element is common. So, one element is missing in every term is their GCD is definitely 1 only. Their GCD is 1 only. Means if the GCD is 1, then they are relatively prime. Now, if they are relatively prime, one, we have proved one theorem in uh, ring theory that if p of x and q of x are relatively prime, then there exist, then there exist another polynomials lambda of x and mu of x such that lambda of x into p of x plus mu of x into q of x is equal to gcd d that we have proved. So, accordingly here since the gcd is 1, there exist polynomials say a1 of x, a2 of x etc, ak of x such that a1 of x into h1 of x plus a2 of x into h2 of x etc. ak of x into hk of x is equal to the gcd. gcd means 1 year. This implies look here a1 of t into h1 of t plus a2 of t into h2 of t etc. ak of t into hk of t is equal to 1. Okay. Now consider for v belongs to v. Now consider for v belongs to v v can be written as 1 into v. Now, 1 is just now we have proved the above term will be equal to 1. So, 1 is equal to 1 is equal to a1 of t into h1 of t plus a2 of t into h2 of t etc. ak of t into hk of t of v. So, this can be written as say a1 of t into h1 of t of v that will be written as h1 of t into a1 of t of v and so on hk of t into ak of t of v. So, this is equal to now each h a of t of a of t belongs to where a of t belongs to v means h a of t of v means it is contained in v i it is contained in v i therefore the vector v means it, it is the sum of v1 v2 etc v k therefore v belongs to v, v, v1 plus v2 etc v k therefore we can declare that v is the sum of v1 v2 etc v k but we need to show this sum is the direct sum Direct sum means what? Each of these subspaces are disjoint, means they are really it's mutually disjoint, mutually distinct, means so their intersection is only 0. We have to show this. Suppose now to show this, it is enough to show that if v1, v2, etc., vk is 0 with each vi belongs to v, then each of these vis are zeros. Each of these vis are zeros. Okay, and so now. So now, so suppose v1 plus v2 etc, vk is 0 and that for some j, for some j, say vj is non-zero, what will happen? Let us see. Now, vj is non-zero means hj of x, you consider hj of x, hj of x is what? q1 of x per of l1, q2 of x per of l2 etc, qj term missing here. So, qj minus 1 of x of lj minus 1 into qj plus 1 of x of lj plus 1 and so on up to qk qk of x power of lk. So, this implies certainly each of these qi of x divides hj of x right. So, this divides hj of x for i is not equal to j. Now, is this divides hj of x means say qi of x power of li of vi is 0 is 0. This implies Q i of t power of l i of v i is 0, okay. Q i of, Q I of t power of l i of v is 0, this implies h j, h j of t, h j of t of v i is 0 because this divides this and this is equal to 0 means what? This is also h j of t is also 0, okay. And so now, so here we arrive at Q, j, Q i of x power of l i, it divides h j of x, but q i of t power of l i of v i is equal to 0 by definition. So, this implies that h j of t of v i is 0 okay, for i is not equal to j. Now, v 1 plus v 2 etc. We have assumed that v 1 plus v 2 etc. v k is 0. v 1 plus v 2 etc. v k is 0. This implies you apply h j of t for this. h j of t of v 1 plus v 2 etc. v k is equal to h j of t of 0 which is 0. This implies h j of t of v1 plus h j of t of v2 etc. h j of t of v j and so on h j of t of v k is 0. 
this implies so hj of t of vi etc everything zero means all other terms all other terms hj of t of v1 is zero every term except this term is non zero means this implies because just now we have proved look here hj of t of vi is zero for i is not equal to j therefore hj of t of vj is only remains that means that will be equal to zero hj of t of vj is zero means which is a contradiction because we have seen that it is non zero okay so what will happen so which is a contradiction which this contradiction arises due to our assumption that some vj is not equal to zero means every vjs are zeros for j is equal to 1 to k hence v1 intersection v2 etc intersection vk is zero now already shown that v1 is the sum of v1 plus v2 etc vk and now we have shown that each of these are mutually dis distinct okay or their intersection is zero therefore we can conclude that v is the direct sum of v1 plus v2 etc up to vk thus we have proved the second condition also right now let us it remains to show the minimal polynomial of ti is qi of x power of li now by definition of vi, qi of t power of li of vi is 0, okay. This implies qi of t on v, vi means ti, qi of ti of li is 0 on vi. Therefore, hence the minimal polynomial of ti must be a divisor of qi of x power of li. Now, ti satisfying this polynomial means minimal polynomial should should divide the, the any polynomial satisfied by ti therefore the minimal polynomial divides qi of ti qi of x power of li means what how the minimal polynomial looks minimum polynomial may be q1 of x q2 of q1 of x or q1 of x power of l q1 of x per square q2 of q1 of x l cube and so on l3 and so on okay and so now so means it must be this is minimal polynomials dividing this polynomial means it is looking like qi of x only with power li only that li i must be less than or equal to sorry sorry i that uh, power qi of power of say mi must be less than or equal to li less than or equal to li but we know that if v is the direct sum of v1 v2 etc vk where each vi is invariant under t and if pi of x is the minimal polynomial of ti then the minimal polynomial of t over f is the lcm of p1 of x p2 of x etc pk of x therefore by the above pol above result we can declare that the minimal polynomial of t over f is the lcm of what is the minimal lcm of what what is the minimal polynomial q1 of x power of m1 q2 of x power of m2 and so on qk of x power of mk okay it is the lcm of this means therefore it must be of the form so each of these are you know that they are distinct relatively prime these are relatively prime polynomials means what will happen lcm must be the mul multiplication of these polynomials means the lcm of q1 of x power of m1 comma q2 of x power of m2 is the product q1 of x power of m1 into this is the product q1 of x power of m1 into q2 of x power of m2 and so on qk of x power of mk but this polynomial is in fact q1 of x power of l1 q2 of x power of l2 etc qk of x power of lk we must have m1 must be greater than or equal to l1 m2 must be greater than or equal to l2 etc mk must be greater than or equal to l lk but mi is less than or equal to mi must be less than or equal to li because it is a minimal polynomial therefore m1 is equal to l1 m2 is equal to l2 etc mk is equal to lk therefore the minimal polynomial of ti is what it becomes qi of x power of li itself okay and so now the minimal polynomial of ti is qi of x power of li okay this, uh, this is the one of the important results so i will take up the jordan form in detail in the next class thank you for listening